that was a that was a strike and a half. Wow, that was crazy. Like that. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh, loving it. Ooh, that ooh, that's a big fish. That's a nice fish. He's pulling me all around this buoy here. Oh, that's a nice big fish. Power bait, man. <laughs> That's a big rainbow right there. That's that's probably five pounds. <laughs> oh man. Speed spoons. Troll them, cast them, or jig them. If you want to get aggressive with trout, get a set of Kel Kellogg speed spoons and get your fish on. Available at the fishhuntshoot.com website. Howdy folks, Kel Kellogg here. Um, I was out squirrel hunting today, that's why I'm all camoed up, but I'm not here to talk about squirrel hunting. I'm here to talk about how to net fish. Um, more specifically, how to net big fish. I heard one of those horror stories yesterday and it went like this. It was a, it's a friend of mine, his name is Vince, longtime subscriber. I've known this guy for about 12 years. Um, we've charter boat fished together. He's gone on some of my trips. We fished Collins Lake together, stuff like that. Well, it turns out, and you know, he's a very experienced angler. He's probably netted thousands of fish. Turns out him and his buddy Lonnie were out on Sassoon Bay. Vince has caught a bunch of keeper sturgeon in his time, but Lonnie had never caught one. Well, Lonnie's on the rods, Lonnie hooks up, Lonnie's fighting a fish, Vince gets out his big old salmonette, he's ready for action, Lonnie's wearing the fish down. Vince said it was probably an upper end keeper, might have been oversized, but he thought it was a keeper. He, you know, it's a 50 plus inch fish, it's a big old fish. So somehow the fish comes to the boat and the big old pyramid sinker they were using ends up tangled in the net, um, makes the net basically inoperable. The rod is pretty much inoperable. The fish is rolling around, they're trying to hand line it in, and somewhere in this process, the fish came off the hook. Fish is gone, fishing trip's effectively over. Um, Lonnie must have been devastated. Vents felt horrible, and uh, so it goes. The upside is, there's more sturgeon out there. Guys, get out there and get after them and don't dwell on it. I've lost fish that way too. I've never lost a sturgeon that way, but I've had guys try to net fish for me. Usually they rush it and the fish ends up getting off for whatever reason, you know, and some, sometimes there's just accidents. Back when I was a kid, we had a net that was a little bit frayed. We didn't think anything of it. My dad reached down, you know, I hooked a big German brown that night. My dad reached down, netted the fish, lifted it up, fell right through the net. Go figure, gone. So, it happens, but the bottom line is there's a few things you can do to ensure as much success as possible when it comes to netting fish, because netting fish is kind of an art. It's not rocket science, but just a couple things to pay attention to. One, don't rush it, okay? Sometimes you'll see me net fish real quick. I've netted a lot of fish, and I, I net the fish based on their body language, okay? You absolutely have to have the fish's head up when you're netting a fish. If his head is down, guess what? You're gonna go after him, he's gonna see the net coming, he's gonna bolt, he's gonna go down, you're gonna miss the fish and hit the line. You might knock the hook loose, you might get away with it, you might break the line. Nothing good is gonna happen if you try to net a fish with his head down. I've got, got my ego net here. Um, Having said that, netting fish doesn't have a whole lot to do with the net, uh, provided that, you know, the net, the hoop on the net is big enough for what you're trying to net. You know, this is a trout net. This isn't the net you want to have to try to land a 40 pound salmon in. But assuming the net is the proper size, doesn't have a lot to do with the net. Um, so remember, keep the fish's head up 
and you want the fish to be completely played out. If you're gonna keep the fish for the table, you want the fish completely exhausted, but you know, there are a couple times when that may not work. Um, good example um, comes to mind, I was up at Elmanor this year, my wife was hooked up with a big rainbow. It turned out to be a five plus pound fish. She's fighting it and it actually charged the boat. So this is a hot fish. I didn't have time to get up the, the downrigger cable. I didn't have time to get in the other lead core line. We're in some breeze. Um, so it's challenging to start with. The, the fight turns vertical. The fish is going up and down the side of the motor and the downrigger cable and he is barely hooked. I could see the whole lure outside of his mouth. He was on a trigger spoon. He is very lightly hooked. So I even said during the fight, I said, we're gonna get one shot at this fish and I'm giving Gina a bunch of instructions. She can't see over me. I'm up on the transom of the boat and I'm telling her, rod tip here, rod tip here. I'm just having her apply pressure to keep the fish away from the motor and away from the cable. And when that fish came up, the first chance I got when that fish had his head up, I didn't care if he was tired or not because it was just a matter of time before that hook came out or he got tangled in something. So as soon as he had his head up and he was near the surface, I made my move and I scooped that fish and I, you know, we got him. So, so that's important. If you're on a net, you know, you got to read the body language of the fish. You want to try to net a fish that's completely worn out, but you know, situations vary. So if you think you need to, to net the fish before he's totally worn out, just make sure that his head is up and always come at him from the head first. I don't like to have my net buried in the water when I'm netting a fish. I like to have the front portion, the lip of the net, just barely in the water. And then, you know, sometimes a fish will be coming in picture perfect. And you'll see this in my kayak videos a lot. I'll be leading the fish around picture perfect. And the next thing you know, he'll get a little, little binky and I'll pull the net out of the water because what I don't want to happen, I don't want any part of the tackle getting tangled in the net. If you watch the channel, you know I've been trolling with a lot of uh, flies recently. Last thing I want is a wiggle disc to get hooked up in the mesh of the net or a treble hook, get one of the hooks that's outside the fish's mouth hooked in the outside of the mesh. Now all of a sudden the fish is outside the net and you're not going to get him back in there. So you don't want the, you know, you don't want the fish near the net until you are scooping the fish into the net because a lot of bad things can happen when the fish is swimming around the outside of the net. Now let's move on from the netter to the, uh, to the guy on the rod. Okay. So the guy on the net, he should sh show you the net. I mean, you should see it. He should be in position. He should be ready with the net. You're watching the fish. You're watching him. Ideally, you want to use pressure from the rod to bring the fish up, get his head up, get him near the surface, and then lead him towards the net. Um, you'll see this a lot on charter boats. The deck hand will be there. He's stalking a fish, and he'll, he'll say something like, lay the fish out he'll tell the customer the customer he's just happy to have the fish up near the surface he's like get my fish deck candle say lay the fish out you'll hear that a lot on halibut trips what that means is they want that angler to put some angled pressure on that fish to get his head up and get him moving in a in a direction towards the net so they can make a nice smooth scoop on that fish so when you're on the rod make sure you bring the fish up to the net get his head up Lay that fish out, give that, the guy on the net, give him a nice target, give him a nice, you know, calm fish to make his move on. And uh, those two things right there. If you're the netter, you wanna be netting fish with their head up. And if you're on the rod, you wanna be leading those fish to the net. If you, you guys can pull those two things off, you're gonna net the vast majority of fish that you get to the boat. Remember, when it comes to big fish, particularly big trout, big salmon, there are two critical times where a lot of fish are lost right after the hookup and right beside the boat. The fish that you lose right after the hookup, hey, that's luck, there's nothing you can do. Keep a tight line and hope for the best. Once you've had a fish on for a, for a while, especially a big fish, a lot of guys get them up to the boat, they see the size of that fish and they panic. That's not the time to panic, okay? You don't wanna get buck fever if you're not a hunter, Buck fever is you see that big old buck over there and all of a sudden you get all excited and you can't shoot straight. Get excited after the deer is on the ground. Get excited after that big old trout is in the net. Until then, control your nerves, stay calm. Time is your friend in most cases. Get that fish's head up, get him into the net, 
make a nice smooth job of it, and uh, you're gonna be happy you did. Anyway, that's my tip for the day. Don't lose a fish because you're too anxious on the net. Keep your cool, get them in the net. Don't get the tackle tangled in the net, get the fish in the net. Anyway, I'm Kel Kellogg, I've blabbered long enough. You guys have a wonderful day and uh, I will see you out on the water. If you haven't had a chance to check out the Fish Hunt Shoot store yet, go over there, we've got a lot of great tackle. And if you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and uh, I will catch you next time right here on YouTube. I got some chores to do before it gets dark. Anyway guys, thanks for all the support. This is Kel Kellogg signing off.